Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 212 of Category 5 Technology TV. Tuesday. It's 212 backwards and forwards. Yeah. All right. Weird, eh? Yeah. Like a palindrome of numbers. Oh, hey. We could, like, create a logo for tonight's show, and it's, like, <laughs> it's like in a mirror. Yeah. Oh, no, but that would be, like, 515. Oh, weird. It's Tuesday, October the 11th. 11th. Perfect timing for a cop. 2011. How you doing, Eric? I am all right. I'm happy to be yeah. here, glad to be alive, and I have coffee. Yes, folks. Coffee? coffee. How's the Somebody coffee? Somebody in the chat room said they could smell a caffeine mm. addiction. And Schluin on uh, on Twitter mm. reminded me to put on some coffee for you. Well, thank you. Schluin. Thank you. All right. It's good coffee. It is Thank good. you for that. I'm kind of liking it. Oh, we hey, have, chat room. We have action figures. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Always. It's all good. Well, so. I'll let you uh, kind of tease us to what's coming oh, up. Yeah. The, we, we Here's what's coming up hey, in John. the newsroom. Yeah, all right. Ubuntu will power HP's public cloud. YouTube is hey. the UK's latest movie rental service. Pretend hackers plan to attack the digital infrastructure of the 2012 Olympics. The BlackBerry blackout continues even after RIM said they'd fix the problem. Oh, that's no good. Yeah. Discover, Discovery Channel will be airing a special documentary about Steve Jobs on Sunday. Oh. So stick around. These stories are coming up in 30 minutes or less. That's cool. Have you got your Halloween costume all set up? I'm wearing it. <laughs> this is oh. it, eh? <laughs> Actually, a couple of years ago, my neighbors were having a really rowdy, great Halloween party, and yeah. they'd invited me, but I had company that night, and we'd had a dinner, and I'd, I, I I love to cook. We'd had a really nice gourmet dinner, and, and I, anyway, I decided around 11 o'clock, I'd just go over and make an appearance, but I was just wearing, you know, a dress shirt and a tie oh, okay. and stuff like that, and I showed up at the door, and, what are you dressed as? And I said, the angry neighbor, and they all sort of got <laughs> quiet, and, and I told them I was kidding, but yes. yeah. I'll he kids. Come up with he kids. <laughs> That Eric kid. Yes. I ask about Halloween costumes because we actually have a Category 5 costume store that you can visit online, cat5.tv slash costumes. Maybe next year we should have Category 5 action figure costumes, like we could have a Robbie head and a... Oh. And a Krista head and a Hillary Cool head. We can maybe put in a, a word, yeah. And a Rachel head. Yeah. And, uh, all you have to do is just find a polo just a shirt that is bright and, yellow, yeah, you can, and uh, you fake can beard, beard, and uh, maybe some fake, you know, the fake chest hair. They hey, make, they make that fake. stuff. No, no, but it, it's the Eric, <laughs> the Eric costume. Okay, I'll do up more buttons. <laughs> oh dear me! I try to behave tonight. I told you I was going to try to act like more of an adult in the future, but I have yet to see. <laughs> I have yet to see. There's still time. So yeah, tonight. We got lots going on, lots of your questions. We welcome you to get <coughs> we welcome you to get your questions in. It's uh, live at category five dot TV. Uh, also tonight we're going to be looking at a very cool uh, clipboard enhancer for our Linux system, which is going to allow us not just to have access to our clipboard, but to have access to previous clipboards on the fly. So Ooh. we're going to talk about that. It's really, really cool. How much memory is that going to use up? Well, we're going to see. We're going to find out. Mm. Good question. Wrong time, Eric. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> find out. Okay. In about a half hour. Whoa. Chat room, how are you? Nice to see you. What's ya. going on in the chat room tonight? Yeah, we're going to do our best to uh, keep track of uh, of you guys. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, yeah. Hey, Jameson, no, so you sound no. like you're getting sick. Yeah. And, yeah. What can you do? So, I guess we'll jump uh, right into some viewer <laughs> questions. <laughs> Doing good, Val Penon, or Val Pen 1. I'm Val not Pen sure. One. Uh, yes. Guess Sorry, gang. 12700 says Eric looks like a banana. There. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 and Jot says I look like a canary. You know, I'm putting back my red, 
I had a red T-shirt, but it had a hockey logo on it, and it was suggested perhaps that uh, I shouldn't be advertising. And so <laughs> now I'm a banana or a canary. It's okay, it's his only option. <laughs> oh, sorry. There, there's more. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Well, canary. Since I didn't have spots, I can't be a banana or a plantain. Okay. We'll, we'll go over this here. This is seriously happening in the chat room. People. This is going on. This is what this you're is missing. A, this is a technology if you're not in the show. Chat room. Yes. And it's all about getting into the chat room and <laughs> being a part of the technology, so that you can also poke fun at Eric's shirt. I like the shirt. Anyway. Okay. Well, we have a question here. Fantastic. This is a highly technical one too. All right. It's from uh, Leland. Hey, Leland. Which is pronounced Leland. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I'm often wrong. Um, the operating system is Heart Lungs Terabyte Expandable. Um, anyway, Robbie, love the show. And this is the technical question. Oh, okay. Do you think Jodie Foster looks like Hillary? What? Peace, the Buckmasters. Oh, there we go. We have a picture. Okay. Chat room, what do you think? So this is from Leland? Hmm. I don't know. I guess similar kind of sides to the eyes. How do we get on this? Thanks, chat room. Leland put us there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you never know. You never know. Moving on. And the fact that he took the time to find similar poses and, and yeah. put them side by side. Okay. Thanks, Leland. Very nice. <laughs> oh, Hillary, Similar. where are you? Where is Hillary? Her shirt this is kind also, of matches Hillary's scarf. This is also from Leland. All right. <laughs> Hillary, you have a stalker. <laughs> Hillary, how do I use the chat room? Oh, well, that's a little more reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> but Hillary's not here. Should we be reading these questions? I feel like I'm... Well, you know, it's... <laughs> Hillary, Hillary, <laughs> Eric, are you... Oh, the I'm interchangeable going, I'm going co-host. To get a scarf. How do you use the chat room? There's a few different ways. <laughs> First of all, category five dot TV is our website. There, Leland. Let's bring it up. When we are live on the air, you're going to notice something about our website, and that is that we have a little bit of information about the live broadcast right on the home page of the site. It's only there during the live broadcast. See over on the left hand side here pop up your players, etc., etc., and then join the chat room, okay? You can click that link, and it's going to launch. Alternatively, up at the top, at all times, you've got the interact menu. Scroll down, you'll see chat room. Click on that, and it takes you to the exact same place. Now, we're going to enter your nickname, where it says guest and then it'll have a random number. Could we could go... Canary banana? Or, oh, little... Was it, was it like, like... Is that how it's spelled? Yep, that's how it's spelled. Okay. So we put in your name there. Leave this as... It, <laughs> pardon me, as is. This is uh, our chat room. Thanks for the... <laughs> thanks for that. Okay, this is CAPTCHA. This is... Uh, we're not going to... We're not... CAPTCHA. Oh, ReCAPTCHA. Yes. ReCAPTCHA. It's I, like... I love the audio, but <laughs> go ahead with the... Uh, well, do you tell the, the story? Well, we were building a website and we decided that we should have some kind of validation here on yes, the, on the forum before capture. people sent it in sure so we added the recapture which is a wonderful wonderful thing. great service um, helps them you to can, you know try to decipher books. the letters <laughs> or you can click for the the audio captcha mm -hmm. and honest to goodness it, basically it was I, I think the instructions were if you can't understand it just smack your hands wildly on it kind of sounded like that hey! <laughs> That's pretty much what it was. And it's like click for the and, audio capture. Um, and it was like totally. It wasn't English at all. It was. It, it was just there something from a movie word, from I, the fifties. Neither one of us could decipher. There was a no word. figuring Not, it out at all. That was our first experience we with kept recapture. We everybody out of sending that form in. I'll tell you. Definitely. <laughs> so Leland, what you need to do. Stay away from the audio capture <laughs> and try After your we best. played it about 12 times, it was at that point the boss came over and said, are you guys getting any work done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there we go, all right? So I've entered that as best I can, all right? <laughs> don't, don't click there. <laughs> Do not check off off to services unless you have a registered nickname, which I'm guessing you don't. And then we hit connect. That's going to go loop and boom, boom, boom. All of a sudden, 
there's Leland in the chat room. All right? So everybody in the chat room can see that I've signed in, and I can just go down yeah. to the but very bottom Leland here. can't sign in. No, not with Leland. as of himself. Hi. I'm testing. See what I'm doing there? Just typing it down there. You're testing As soon as I hit patience. enter, oh. it posted that to the chat room. See? Cool, huh? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we know, Robbie. All right. Sorry. I was just helping. That's option one. I'm going to close out of that. The other, and possibly, you know, a, a more geekified version of that is to actually use an application for your IRC. If you're using Linux, Leland, uh, what was he using there? Did he mention? Ah, uh, let's go back and see. I don't think he gave me that much information. He just wanted to talk to Hillary. Um, no, didn't mention the operating system. Oh, yes, he did in his previous message. Wasn't it? Oh, okay. Um, we're getting there. Not so much? Ah, uh, heart, lungs, 10 terabyte expandable GP. No, he didn't. <laughs> Okay. We're going to pretend you're on Linux. That's the most likely scenario here. These days, I don't know, it tends to come with this, um, this guy here, empathy. I am not an empathy fan. I mean, as far as... He's not very as empathetic far as the, either. As far as the application goes. I am so empathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know how I feel. So, so with, with uh, empathy, it's pretty straightforward. You can create a new... Um, account. I can show you that. I'll just make sure that I'm cool here. Yeah. All oh, right. You're cool here. They're here we go. Everywhere, Robbie. Here we are in empathy. Edit accounts. And we're going to go add and then protocol. Choose IRC for internet relay chat. Select that. It's already selected free node for me, but that is what you want it to select. Free node. Okay. Password, leave blank. Real name, Leland123, and then apply. It's going to connect. I am connected. I'm good to go. Then, once it's connected, see it's connecting right now. Let's see how it goes. Oh, I'm already connected to the server, so it's not going to let me, but it will work for you. So now, when that's done. It's an angry red. Yeah, go to room, and then join. And then it'll, you want to select Leland123 on Freenode or whatever it happens to be. And then room, pound, or hash, category 5. Just like that. And then join. That's going to take you in with empathy. I tend to prefer Pigeon, oh. which uh, is a great application that you can get for your... Uh... Oh, sorry. oh, how interesting. There we go. So yeah, it's uh, that's that's all there is to it. Does that help? I sure hope so. There we go. There you go. Thanks for the question, Leland. And uh, again, Pigeon is my personal preference. Um, you can walk through the steps. It's pretty simple. Again, you want to add an IRC <laughs> chat. What's going on? Uh, oh, Jot said Canary, not guys. Pigeon, but good impression. Oh, okay. okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know what kind of sound a canary makes. Oh, yeah. Good point there, Dave Maydew. Um, it is Pidgin. P-I-D-G-I-N. That should be clarified, eh? They should learn how to spell. <laughs> Not an ornithologist, I bet. Here we go. Okay. System. Administration. Synaptic Package Manager. Enter your password there, Leland. Type in P-I-D-G... Was it I-N? I am. Yeah. There we go. Mark for installation. Grabs a couple of other packages. Hit apply. It'll download that. Look at this. Linux is fantastic for installing applications. It is, too. You don't even have to know the website or anything. But it's pigeon.im, in case you were wondering. There it goes. Almost there. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Eric Kidd. And I'm hoping Leland's out there somewhere tonight watching. Definitely. 
Definitely. <laughs> Down here, Category5.tv is our website. You see our Twitter uh, account there as well, Category5TV. Make sure you follow us and say hi. That Pigeon uh, application is all done installing, so I'm going to close out of Synaptic Package Manager. I'm going to go Applications, Internet, and you'll see now you should have Pigeon, which I do not. I, s I think I have something going on with my Zorn OS installation mm. but no problem you you will generally see pigeon there otherwise hit alt f2 and type in the word pigeon okay and spell it with two eyes no e's well, rows yeah and that's how it's spelled okay with a lowercase p when you're running the application um okay add irc for internet relay chat username mm -hmm. leland uh no spaces remember five Four three two one. This time, notice this particular application is defaulted to irc.ubuntu.com, which would be fine. But we're going to go irc.freenode.net. That's the chat server that we use here at Category Five. The password. Again, we're not registered, so don't worry about it. Advanced. Everything looks good. All good. Add. It's going to connect. Notice down here. Available. Connecting. Not quite connected. Let's see what happens here. It's not moving. Oh, it's doing something. I'll close out of Synaptic. I didn't close all the way. Come on, bad boy. It's a coming, it's a coming. There we go. Oh, it, as soon as I switch camera, oh, it just well, flipped to available. So it was just waiting to connect there. Okay, Leland, in, this is Pigeon, remember. Buddies, join a chat. And you notice that it's using irc.freenode.net. We're going to go, again, channel, the little hash sign, category 5. Okay? And then go join. Now, there we go. you got a beautiful colorized chat room. I prefer this greatly over um, the Empathy IRC client. It looks really good. It works really well. It saves HTML logs if you want to. You can actually go save as and save your log file as an HTML file. Very cool. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Cool. There we go, Leland. <laughs> you have three different ways to use the chat room. <laughs> First of which is the absolute easiest, which is to say uh, to use our website, category5.tv. Wow. This is Leland Robbie. Hey? This is Leland Oh, Robbie. well, I kind of... I kinda yeah. Took over as Leland yeah. there for a minute, didn't I? So, Leland, you're going to have to change your name. The whole time, chat room's like, oh, look, Leland's here. Great. He's, <laughs> hey, Leland, Robbie's just about to show you. Leland now no, has an it's, identity. It's <laughs> actually me. <laughs> hey, we have a question that's not from Leland. <laughs> <laughs> Thank one. you for the questions, Leland. Yes. Appreciate it. Uh, Randy M. Hey, Randy. And uh, not telling us the OS either. But I really like your mobile website. I was wanting a mobile template for my website mm. viewable with iPod. Are you required to use PHP without a server? Thanks much for incredible show. Randy, fantastic question. I would love to... Uh, we're going to take a look at our mobile site in just a couple of minutes, and then I'll show you how to actually set up a website specifically for your mobile devices. Oh. All right, we're going to have to take a break for just a moment, and we'll be right back after this. Whether hitting the road or the dusty trails, Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point-of-view HD video camera built directly into a high-quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high definition video with a high quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com This is Category 5 Technology TV, www.category5.tv. Viewer question is, how can I set up a mobile website, does it require that I have access to PHP, for example? Let's first of all start off here, Randy, uh, by taking a look at our mobile website. I've got my iPod Touch here. There you go. A little hard for you to see at home. There it is. There you okay. go. So that's last week's episode. What's really cool is this week we launched version 2.1, and you'll see that now we have a watch live feature. So now... 
even though we are live on the air right now. It's just a little bit behind. It's just in the middle of that commercial that just aired. There you go. Cool stuff. That's very cool. Yeah, so that's uh, that's part of our mobile website, mobile.cat5.tv. Lots of great features there. If you've got a portable device, iPhone, iPod Touch, BlackBerry, the real thing. Androids. Oh. Well, <laughs> there is news coming up about those, you know. There's a lot of people oh. in Europe and, and China that are a little, a little frustrated with, uh, with BlackBerry right now. Just saying. But it is, uh, it's pretty cool. Let's bring it up on the iPad just so that you can have a bit of a better view. There we are. So that's our mobile website. As Randy was saying, it's, it's pretty cool. You can go through and view different episodes. Right? It's got all that kind of stuff. It's cool stuff. But how do we do that? Do we need PHP? Technically, no, you don't need PHP. What you do need, though, is a, is a web server. It's a website, right? But does it have to be a separate website, or can you host it on your existing website? That's really the question. So what we have tapped into is that there are some fantastic libraries out there. Take a look. You know, do some searching, Randy. Uh, over here on Google, I'm going to type in iWebKit. Okay, so... Go over to snippetspace.com, and you'll see here is iWebKit 5. Learn more. There are some demos on the website as well, which you would want to, in fact, run on your iPhone or, or Android device, because it's not designed to be run in a browser. But you can see that it, it looks very much like... Um, uh, like a, an Apple app, basically. So you can actually download that. It's free. There we go. Nice and quick. So we've got the demo, and we've got the framework. So with a little bit of knowledge, knowledge, you'll be able to set this up. And you'll notice that within the samples, they are not PHP files, but in fact, HTML files. So these are statically set pages. There is one... That's a PHP file which loads a blog through an RSS feed. A little bit different as far as how that works. So you can, you can technically do this with strictly HTML. Personally, Randy, I prefer to go the PHP route because then I can go dynamic. Right. I'm not tied down to, you know, you look at this. Here's the examples folder. And it's like, okay, each one of these files is a different, basically a page which is interpreted as a screen in your application. Do I really, if I change the menu, do I really want to have to open every single one of those and try to match it up? I'd rather just have a PHP include. So that's iWebKit. There's another one called JS, uh, let's see. Don't tell me I forget the name of it. I won't tell you. Not coming up, but... Oh, well, this is why. See, look at what's happening here. Google... Ah, I'm typing bad. There we go. This, is, this can be annoying. Be, be mindful of this. Sometimes Google can mess with your search results, right? Look what's happening here. I'm, t I'm trying to search for this program, JS Query, right? And it's saying, hey, uh, you probably spelled it wrong. We're going to do a search for jQuery right. instead. So you can well, click no. On the... Well, that's the wrong yeah. thing. That's not what I want at all. Just... I want... Right. There. We want to go search instead for what I asked for in the first place. Right? <laughs> Just give it to me. There we go. I'm going to post links in the show notes for episode number 212. I better make sure I've got the app name right. You should. Just make yeah, sure. just really, really quick. Go to our app. Click on About. <sighs> I'm totally wrong. <laughs> and it's okay. Because that's why we... <laughs> Oh, it's not. Yeah, okay. Dennis, you can delete that whole segment. <laughs> All right? When you're in post with this one. Just that whole thing about JS query. We don't even know what that is. But we learned something about Google today, and that's what it's all about. It's called JQ Touch. That's the one I want to show you. 
I was like, J Query, what? Well, S Q, they're pretty close to each other. Yeah, I know. J Q Touch is, uh, in many respects, a little further along than iWebKit. It features a lot of animation, so it has some pretty cool stuff. You look at J Q Touch, see the demo here, even, and you can see how it, it animates everything in, just like an I- iPhone app. And it'll work on other devices. We, it's it's showing an iPhone, but. It works on Android and all that stuff. Smoothie. Is it Canadian? <laughs> so this is, in fact, the platform that we have based version 2.0 of our mobile system off of. And the reason that I switched away from iWebKit is because this one gave me um, some functionality, especially speed, that uh, was not quite there with, uh, with iWebKit. But that said, they are both fantastic frameworks. I found that iWebKit, they've been uh, promoting version 6 coming, coming soon uh, for too long, and I, uh, JQ Touch has now, in my eyes, kind of surpassed iWebKit because they're continuing development faster in the public eye. iWebKit's development is kind of waiting for the developer to bring out uh, version 6, which is uh, you know highly enhanced. So on our mobile website, I actually, I in fact, disabled most of these animations because despite what they're showing you there they're very clunky on some some mobile devices so I made the sacrifice and said you know what I want it to be instant when you click I don't want things jumping all around if you have a problem where you know you scroll down a list and you click on it and it jumps up to the top and then animates I just wasn't into that Hmm. (laughs) so this again (coughs) JQ Touch is going to give you (laughs) pardon me a free download okay It's a little bit bigger. You can see it's taking a little bit longer to download. Six seconds left. Here we go. Okay. So now in here, what do we have? We've got demos, extensions, JQ Touch, the actual actual framework, and themes. Okay, so if we go into demos, you can basically use any of these to design your site. And again, it's an HTML. JQ Touch is different because it uses all one file to create your entire system, your system. So that's one of the reasons with JQ Touch that I wanted to, to do it in PHP uh, because we're using you know databases, we're making a dynamic system. Because it's all one page, essentially, like from a file standpoint, it's one .php file that grabs data from the database and inputs it properly. If you're trying to do it in an HTML file, you might have trouble once you get to a certain size in that it might just be hard to manage. Still going to load fast. It is Ajax, so you know it's only loading the divs that it needs, um, essentially, as long as you're using a mobile device. If you bring it up in your browser, it's going to try to load everything. Oh. But so, And that, my friends, is why. How is it determining what is going for your mobile app and what isn't? Well, it's going to just... Out of the box, JQ Touch and iWebKit are just going to run. You saw how I ran the mm-hmm. demo, the demo of iWebKit in my browser. That's pretty cool. So what I've actually done through PHP is I created. If you go to our website, uh, the mobile site, on your internet browser, like on your computer, it automatically detects that it's a computer and you're not allowed to go any further. Oh. So and that's important for us because uh, imagine <laughs> <laughs> you've got. You know, 211 videos loading in the background of your browser. Whoops. <laughs> yes. I mean, because they buffer, right? Yes. So check those two out. iWebKit, JQ Touch. Both of those, free to download, free to use. Is that just free for uh, an i? An iPhone? Yeah. iDevice? Or, or is no, these are f- <coughs> mobile. Androids, any bullet work on all of them? Mobile frameworks. So, okay. Um, we can ask the chat room. I mean, you've got your BlackBerry there. I do. Uh, pull up our I mobile turned site. Off my wireless. Cause oh, I, we're not on wireless mics anymore, so I suppose that's okay. Well, not a bad thing. Because uh, I uh, no, the, the BlackBerry does make a ding, ding, a ding kind of. That's kind of cool. Sound a, sound. Oh, really? The like yeah. that weird sound that's probably causing cancer. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Well, let's see. No, I can't connect to your Wi-Fi. We used to have that in radio. Uh, that, uh, yeah, we don't have Wi-Fi here. Okay, so I'll turn not on the mobile network. Anyway. Oh, there I've got some uh, messages coming in. Go to mobile.cat5.tv on your device and let us know in the chat room uh, what it's, uh, how it's performing. And that will answer Eric's question about how does it work. 
I know for a fact with iWebKit, which was our version 1.0 version of our mobile site, you remember it worked perfectly on there. Yeah. Uh, it worked on every device that we could test on. Okay, well, here we are. Okay, so he's bringing this up on his BlackBerry, and it looks like it's working just fine. So, episode. So that's cool. Where should I go? Well, I don't I know. Could click on donate. That would be great. <laughs> That would be great. Everyone go and click on Donate. <laughs> That's your favorite button right there. Okay. Oh, I just closed it again. All right. What do you think? Android, it's working for Invincible Mutant. Now, of course, our Watch Live feature is, is so far only tested on Apple I devices. Hey, Leland. Is that really cool. Leland? Could be. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> and they made it to the chat room, so that's fantastic. Okay. Good to see nice. you. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Is that, does that does that kind of answer your I, question I about that's pretty cool. mobile sites? Yeah, of course. There is a level of you need to understand a little bit about web development. The design is already in place. You just need to be able to code it, put stuff in there. Um, so start with one of the uh, start with one of the demos, and see how it goes. Put in your own text. Put in a couple of images, and you'll learn as you go. Can't hurt. Exactly. It's yeah. not brain surgery. Nobody actually gets hurt if you mess up. <laughs> well. All right, you ready to uh, take over the news? I think we ought to move news? over to the newsroom. What All do you right. Think? Uh, I think that sounds great. Okay. From the Category 5.TV newsroom. On Friday, Canonical CEO Jane Silver announced that the OpenStack conference in Boston that HP had chosen Ubuntu as the lead host and guest operating system powering their public cloud. HP and Canonical are working closely together on a private beta to make certain that they provide the most secure, scalable, business class cloud to companies of all sizes. Wow. In Ubuntu's blog, Kim Zero says, or maybe that's Kim O. We are excited to join with HP in recognizing that open and interoperable cloud infrastructure and services are critical in delivering the next generation of cloud-based services to developers, ISVs, and businesses. Both companies share a common commitment to open source and both embrace the OpenStack community. This is an important announcement on several fronts, that OpenStack is seen as the platform of choice for building uh, out the largest public clouds, and that Ubuntu has what it takes to power OpenStack clouds as a scalable and hardened host of OS and responsive and flexible guest OS. That sounds substantial. It certainly does. Well, when you think about Ubuntu powering HP's cloud, that is huge. It's a huge Wow. Thing. Yeah. YouTube has announced that UK users may now rent movies directly through the YouTube website. <laughs> Partners providing movies for the UK service include Universal, Lionsgate, Entertainment One, as well as independent British filmmakers such as Metrodome and Revolver Entertainment. New releases will cost £3.49. How do you say that? I would say... £3.49. Well, what would you price. say? Maybe £3.49 peck? <laughs> Pence? <laughs> I love it. Oh, oh John. Is the, <laughs> John's the only guy who got it. No, uh, okay, uh, let's think of, no, let's think, let's figure this out. Three Don't even look at the chat room. Pounds. <laughs> I'm three, not looking at this. Uh, what is it? Quid? Three, three and a half quid? How's that? <laughs> three, <laughs> three quid, okay, 49 so be pence. Okay, between 2.49 pounds and three. <laughs> that's the sorry. extent of our conversion yes. abilities. <laughs> um, we are not xe.com. That's worth the boot. Two dollars and fifty oh. cents uh, per pound here, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, new releases will cost three point four nine pounds to rent, and library titles uh, <laughs> two point four nine pounds. We have Users reverted to have <laughs> point four nine. Users have thirty days to begin watching a film and forty eight hours to finish it once they start, which is perfect for those of us who like to plan ahead and watch our movies in five minute increments. <laughs> The service puts YouTube into direct competition with movie rental services offered by Apple, PlayStation, and Xbox, as well as subscription offerings like Love Film. Hmm. Yeah, so there. Um, we should actually do some little research on how to deal with the, the British uh, power. Well, they're, they're <laughs> they instantly okay. correct us in the chat room. I, I wasn't looking in the chat room. I think it was Dave who said, yeah, three and a half quid sounds good. Three and a half quid, okay. But then Andrew was saying, no, no, that sounds Australian. <laughs> well, you just can't win. You just can't win. 
Okay, we're about eight bucks American. Okay, <laughs> a series of worst case scenarios <laughs> are to be played out in March and May, just months ahead of the game's opening. They include a massive denial of service attack on the official website and a virus kicking into organizers' computers. One of the biggest fears around the Olympics is not a crash server or power outage, but a, a deliberate attack by cyber criminals. During the period of the 2008 Beijing Olympics, China was subject to about 12 million online attacks per Ow. day. Ho. The UK has learned lessons from its predecessor, said Jerry Pennell, Chief Information Officer for London 2012. The approach of the website is a distributed one that uh, minimizes the DDoS attack route, he explained. Security testing on the system will be carried out in a specially isolated version of the Olympic network using an in-house team of pretend hackers. That's interesting wording. That would be a fun job. Hey. Hey you, uh, Joe. You wanna you wanna be a hacker today? Yep. Yep. I can pretend. No, I want to be a pretend hacker. <laughs> okay. Are they anatomically correct? No, we'll leave that alone. Just a few <laughs> hours after BlackBerry maker Research in Motion said all services were operating normally following yesterday's BlackBerry blackout, users began complaining of a new crash. Twitter has been full of angry users reporting renewed issues with their handsets and an inability to send messages and email. It would appear that they had to send those angry tweets from a computer or borrow their friend's iPhone. The initial blackout saw BlackBerry services across Europe, the Middle East, and Africa disrupted. The problems now seem to have spread to Latin America as well. RIM has acknowledged that it has uh, was still experiencing problems as of this morning, saying some users in Europe, the Middle East and Africa, India, Brazil, Chile, Argentina, are experiencing messaging and browsing delays. They go on to say we are working to restore normal service as quickly as possible. We apologize for any inconvenience that this has caused. Are you affected by a RIM outage? Let us know. We want to hear from you. Mine's working fine. Okay. The biggest news to hit the tech world this week is not pleasant news at all, but the sad departure of Steve Jobs, Apple co-founder and CEO. Following his death on Wednesday, it seemed the whole world went into mourning with users of Apple devices feeling a kinship to the man who made possible the very device they were tweeting their thoughts from. To remind us of Steve Jobs' impact on the world of technology, Discovery Channel has announced a quickly produced documentary that will look back at the many ways Apple visionary Steve Jobs influenced modern life. Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman from Mythbusters will host the documentary, I, Genius, How Steve Jobs Changed the World, which will premiere on Discovery Channel this Sunday, October 16th. So, you can get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Eric Kidd. And there it was. There it was. Well, we know your BlackBerry. Yeah, your my, BlackBerry my BlackBerry is working fine. <laughs> and that was the noise that you were talking about. I see. Well, now I understand. So there you go. Perhaps hey. I should turn off my wireless again and just... There you go. So we don't Good have idea. these yeah. little interruptions. Hasn't anything to do with the microphones anymore. But what's cool is the sound is fantastic tonight, and that is thanks to Music Pro in Barrie. And they would be happy to receive your order by phone. They will ship it anywhere in Canada or the United States. Uh, so give them a call, and you can find their website. What Cap about Malaysia? Unfortunately, not Malaysia no. this week. Uh, they uh, they will ship to anywhere in Canada and the United States, and that's the extent. Um, <laughs> so if that covers you, um, then it's a great opportunity for you to get a great deal on a fantastic uh, musical instrument or uh, mixer, device, microphones, whatever you need. Yeah. Give them a call. Visit their website. It's cat5.tv slash musicpro. Also, tonight's episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug, cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug, as well, Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash pla uh, Calypso. Pardon me, cat5.tv slash Calypso. So many things start with right. the letter P, and I start to stumble. There we go. <laughs> p -p 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 All right. 
Somebody wanted to know why I said Malaysia. Didn't we uh, have a winner from We Malaysia? actually did. Yeah, yeah. We, we sent a bunch of uh, batteries. <laughs> yes. Invincible Mutant. We're thinking of you, my friend. Yes. In- oh, that was... It was he who... <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> not making fun. Just I am not making fun. I, I call it poking fun. Poking. And uh, we actually got an email. Do you have that uh, available? Invincible Mutant. Well, perhaps we... Who in fact, was our winner for the Eco Alkalines giveaway, cat5.tv slash eco. Ah, we do. Hi, Robbie and gang. I can be gang for tonight. <laughs> we kind of look like it with these bricks, the eh? the batteries. Yeah. Hey, yeah. And, I got, and they've included some pictures here. Look at this. Here are All the, the way to Malaysia. Yes. Yeah. See, we shipped to Malaysia. Yeah. Thanks for the nice poster. This is your newest poster. Oh, the poster, yeah. The red brick background, and Rachel is already on the poster. Indeed. Thank you very much. I love the poster. Cheers, Invincible Mutant. I got a message from Invincible Mutant in the chat room a little bit earlier and said, did you guys just Photoshop in your signatures, or was this legit? Heck, we all piled in vehicles, we sure went did. up to the Photoshop. Come on, hurry up. We need this printed now. <laughs> well, it'll be about an hour. No, we need it now. We, we convinced them. She was so great. You were very charming. I was charming. You were charming. I looked menacing. I think They didn't look too busy. They said it was going to be an hour, so I was like, no. Nah. And, so, so and we you went found and this. and had a snack. I found this really nice pen. It looks great. It's a sharp Look at that. This is a picture yeah. that Invincible Mutant actually yeah. sent. So. I, uh, yeah, it was a fun little excursion. We went on a little adventure so we could send you that picture. For you. Just Invincible for you. Mutant. Yes, indeed. And, uh, of course, the pictures as well from the the prize that Invincible Mutant got. Look at that! Check it out. They have retiled their kitchen floor with Eco Alkaline's batteries. Nice. <laughs> Cat5.tv slash eco. They Congratulations once again. They battery. Oh, they, sh- they yes, sure they do. do? Yeah, they look at that. that. Yeah. yeah. Pretty double much a, anything you need. Double A's, C's. Lots. Tons. Wow. Stacks upon stacks, a full year supply. Awesome. Congratulations once again for uh, for winning that Invincible Mutant. Oh, geez, there's more. <laughs> yeah, I brought them all up for you. <laughs> okay. So shall we... Um... What do you got? Anything in the chat room? We'll open up to the chat room as well. Um, oh, we have we something go. here from... Uh, hey, guys. From Sweden. Can you bring that up, too? Mm-hmm. Okay. Th- this is from Bjorn E. Thanks for a great show. Follow it on video. Now, as hey, you cheers. install 11.10, looks not so different from 10.04. Hmm. I love it so far. It works perfectly on my both PCs. Cool. One Fujitsu Siemens Scalo T desktop, and I have had it both Compaq and Fujitsu laptops. Okay. Sent some pics from outside Stockholm. Follow the Finland boat between the islands. The cool. dog is our Saluki Aradams uh, Zay. Look at that. We're getting pictures I, of I people's hope I pets said that, now. Right? Greetings from Sweden. Bjorn and more pictures Eklund, of the water Holmstad. there as well. Hey, fantastic! You know, thank you for sending the pictures. Wow. And I and I say, you know, we'd love to see where you're from. Um, the best thing. I mean, and thank you very much for sending those to us. Uh, neat to see what it's like out there. And beautiful, beautiful dog. Um, I would love to receive an actual physical postcard. And, we, and we've been saying it for a few weeks. But, you know, send us one down at the very bottom of our website. <laughs> I'm having trouble talking, friends. Sorry about that. He gets all choked up when he thinks about a real live Hard copy, real live postcard with actual it's just writing such a beautiful and thing. signatures. You know, you can <laughs> like get your stamp, own silver just sharpie. Just the taste and of the stamp. It it's just amazing. Um, all right, I'll have a drink and I'll be better. <laughs> At the bottom of our website, you'll see our mailing address. We'd love to receive an actual postcard from you for some viewer points. And of course, um, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I was pretending it was a stamp. I'm sorry. And we'll send some uh, some viewer points your way as well, Bjorn, and everyone else who submitted photos tonight as well. Is that an important note I just ripped? Oh, Definitely well. not. Definitely not. <laughs> it's your pad. <laughs> Okay, any questions in the chat room? We'll just give you a moment there uh, just to get your questions in via the chat room. Don't want to miss you. I know sometimes it's hard for us to keep up, so we'll just take this moment. You'll take that moment, I'll yeah? take this moment. Well, I have another question here in, in the, uh, well, let's the get email. The, okay, that's great. So well, we, let's, well, I want to give the chat room just a okay. chance. Okay. Well, let's go into the chat room then. Hey, chat room. Back over to the chat room. Hey, everybody. 
So good to see you. And while we wait, how's your week going? <laughs> oh, it was suggested. This was not a question, but okay. don't lick the stamp. They, they they have their own self stick now. Oh. So okay. Oh, Jot's got something for us. Wow, what? thanks for that. Okay, what does Jot have for us? I'm not seeing it. He's not wearing his glasses, Chat. This is why the chat room falls behind. Sorry, chat room. <laughs> <laughs> it's right in front of you. Oh, well. That was about the gimp. Uh, well, Jot says, somebody asked him to say, hello, I love your show. You are. <laughs> oh, I did not see that. That was above there. Okay, well, there you go. So Jot says, Rob, yeah, very good. Somebody asked me to say hello. I love your show. You are so bald and skilled at making french fries please oh, tell Chad. me how to draw triangles thank you <laughs> draw triangles okay i remember the question brilliant oh real quick jot 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 bring up the gnu image manipulation program it comes with most linux uh, distributions and of course you it's can, back in ubuntu 11.10 you can get it for windows you can get it for windows you can get it on mac it's wonderful. Okay, watch this. File. New. Ah, uh, sure. There we go. Okay, look at the cool thing up here. You've got a little measuring doodad that when you move, it actually moves that little arrow. Okay? So if I select a pencil, for example, okay, and I click on, well, let's get out just a little bit. You're moving the mouse in one hand. You're you're messing around. I know. I'm zooming. I'm <laughs> clicking. All right. I just need to be able mess. to see both. Okay. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to go. See how? So watch the top. See that little arrow at the top? Watch what I'm doing. I've, I've clicked on 300, and uh, what I should do is go 300 to 100. I'm using that as a guide. Okay. 300 to 100. See that? You're perilously close. Perfect. Now, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go left 100, so I'm down to 200 at the top there, and down 100, down to 200 on the left there. Align them well, holding my left shift key. Watch what happens when I do. Okay, and click. Now go right 100, 200 to 400. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see on the left I'm still at 200. Click. And then back up to 300 and 100, holding my left shift key click and I in fact have essentially a perfect triangle wow because we know that the proportions are exact because we use the measuring tool cool and there you have <laughs> a triangle Ta -da. okay oh. that's in the GNU image manipulation program gimp.org check it out if you're on KDE you've heard of clipper it's a brilliant tool. Yeah. It's fantastic. But I'm on GNOME. GNOME. I want something like that. So I'm going to go into System, Administration, Synaptic Package Manager. Notice I'm using the GUI. You can use apt if you prefer. So you would want to go, oh, Clipper. Right? But that's a KDE tool. It's available, but it's for KDE. Instead, let's get creative and say it's not for KDE. It's for GNOME. It's called Glipper. And this is very different from the Clipper database program from years ago. Yes. Yeah. This is a fantastic clipboard tool, all right, called Glipper. Watch what's going to happen here. And apply that. It's going to grab it off the internet. Because again, I don't need any disks. Don't need to go out and seek out applications. It's all available to me through repositories on Linux. Here it comes. And it's done. That's it. Close out. Now you can hit Alt F2. I've got a problem with my system, so I'm just going to... Uh, my Alt F2 doesn't work. I'm just going to go into my terminal and type Glipper. G-L-I-P-P-E-R. You could have done that with Alt F2. So now, up in the top right-hand side, you see a new little clipboard icon. Okay? Doesn't seem to do anything. Watch this. I'm going to bring up, just for the demonstration, text editor. I'm going to go, hello, hello, world. 
Okay? I'm going to highlight that and copy it. I'm going to highlight that and copy it individually. So now, if I clear out my file, <laughs> pardon me, my file, you'll see if I paste, what's the word? World. Because that's the last thing I copied. That's the traditional clipboard. That's what we're used to. But what happens yeah. if, you know, you were on a website, you copied the URL to your clipboard, and then you forgot that it was there, went around and started copying other stuff, and then realized, oh, I lost that URL, right? Back. So now... Retrace your steps. Yeah. Watch this. Clip on that, uh, click on that, single click on our new icon, and we'll see that everything that we have highlighted, not even copied, but just highlighted, is now available. So we've got hello. So if I click on hello, now if I paste into my text editor, the word hello comes up. Space. Bring up that again. Change to world. Over here. Paste. Very so nice. what it's actually doing <laughs> is it's allowing me to switch to previous clipboards. Now Windows has a feature like that. I don't know. I think it does. P possibly. I, like I don't to. use Windows all that much anymore. Terrible thing, isn't it? <laughs> so that is Glibber. Glipper. 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 Sounds like Flipper or Clipper, but it is Glipper. Check that out. It's it's really a cool tool. Just one of those things that you once you've got it installed, you're going to always want to have it running. So, Speaking of. So th is there one for Mac called Mlipper? Cool, uh, yes. <laughs> you got to amuse this guy. Free. Is there one for Windows? Yeah. Install Linux. How? Oh. oh, okay. Here's what we want to do next. System. Preferences. Oh. <laughs> Accidentally clicked. Preferences. Down here. Startup applications. We're going to click on add. We're going to go, hey, Glipper. In the name, I can use a capital, but in the command, I want to use a lowercase. Okay. Glipper? Glipper. And we're going to say, uh, clipboard enhancer. Whatever you want to put there. That's just a comment. Add. So now, oh, Glipper already added itself, too. How cool is that? Uh, so you can actually check. Clipboard history manager. Oh, it even called it something fancier. See, I thought we had to add it. We don't even have to add it. It's already there. It's going to automatically start. But double check. That's your next step. It's a cool tool. Just That's a little Linux cool. tip for you. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, I think guest uh, 12700 feels like his life is somehow better now that he can make a perfect triangle. Yep. Just Jot feels better about that. <laughs> <laughs> I can make French triangles fries. Triangles make the world go round. And triangles. Yeah. What's this about French fries? I don't know. Okay. That was, must have been cooking French fries. Well, maybe that was when well, I made poutine there a few weeks ago. Oh. Did we talk about the that? The poutine? Poutine? Huh. Yeah. Intriguing. Yeah. Okay. Ubuntu 11.10 is coming out this Thursday. Dave Maydu was wondering in the chat room, how many of you are actually going to go download it Thursday onwards and uh, check it out? Okay. Okay, Goosey, I am using Nagios or Nagios, or however you want to say it. Cool monitoring software for your server. <laughs> what? I just hear these random oh, I'm just over here. Just Jot's making me smile. Okay. Good. He has no idea what that was either, but you forced him to say it. Uh. Was anybody uh, checking out 11.10 this week? Don't forget, Thursday. Cool. Chris Reich says, no, I'm going to stick to the LTS releases. Okay. All right. You have another one for me? Well, we have another question here from the, from the email. All right. Uh, this is Jim Franklin. Hey, Jim. Um, A.K.A. Old Guy Jim. Ah, uh, I've not heard too much about Ubuntu 32-bit versus 64-bit. The download page at Ubuntu always recommends 32-bit. Do you mm. know why that is? I would think there would be a move to 64-bit to allow for better RAM usage. As always, thanks for all the hard work behind the scenes that is done for the broadcast. What a great Old guy, Jim. Eh? Old guy, Jim, you get it, dude. Yeah. Seriously. Well, I... Uh, I don't know the official answer to this. I think, and tell me, tell me if you agree, 
32 bit is safer for them to market on a mass scale. Not everybody has 64 bit. Not everybody has 64 bit. Yeah. If you download the 32 bit, it will work on either. So I think they're making the assumption that if you have a 64 bit capable machine, if in doubt, you know it. Yeah. Right? Okay. D- does that. that yeah, could seems be it. reasonable. Yeah. Because uh, they know <coughs> if you download the 32 bit gem, it's going to work. But if they recommend that you download the 64 bit because it gives you this, this, and this, which it does, and you have a 32 bit only processor, then people are going to say, well, why doesn't it work? Why doesn't Ubuntu work? So right. their safety is to say, we recommend the 32 bit because we know it's going to work on everything. And they just assume that you know that you have a 64 bit capable processor, so you know, you're wise enough to get the 64 bit version. Okay, is that like when you get the menu and if they say if you have to ask how much it is, you can't afford it? If you have to ask, you <laughs> probably don't have Why it. are there no prices <laughs> on this menu? <laughs> Why are you wearing a tuxedo? No, no, you don't need to clean my glass again. Hmm, scary. <laughs> it could be pricey dinner. Jim, All I would right. say definitely if you know you've got a 64-bit capable processor, it is time to get on a 64-bit uh, Linux distro. That is the better way to go. If and you know. if you have everything backed up, go for it. And oh, for doesn't sure. Doesn't work. Start over again. Absolutely. So there. 64 bits going to give you access to um, more memory than PAE can. Um, it's going to open you up for faster processing, future ready, the ability to add more RAM and virtualize <laughs> a little bit better. I'm so sorry, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough tonight talk for an hour with with a cough hmm wow i'm a jolly stayed up until 2 a.m there in israel hey. to watch the show tonight thanks. this morning this afternoon thanks so much for well. uh, for being here joining us in the chat room as well to boot oh an old guy jim says thanks so cheers jim. good to know that uh, yeah let us old know how guy jim was watching let us know how it goes eh we'd love to hear from you all right on our website category5.tv oh that is a slow transition there we go Oh, we're there. Amazon has a question too. I should Check this scroll out. up. Photo gallery. This is a new feature on our website. I'm just playing around. I'm going to tell you to go to that actual page because then if we decide to change our service provider, we can. Right now we're using um, Flickr. Ah. I'm not too sure about them because we're licensed under Creative Commons Attribution. They don't allow us to license the photos under that license. So it's... I don't really like that, but it does give you a chance to see some of our photos from our photo shoot for season five. All <laughs> right. Stuff. Real quick, we've got uh, one okay, minute Amajal left. does have a question. Hey! Um, and uh, says, Eric Kidd, tell Robbie I need his help reverting from GNOME 3 okay. to Unity on 11.04. Hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have time for, for that particular uh, question tonight. Can Just, we get to it next week, maybe? We certainly could. Could you pop us an email live at category5.tv? Uh, and I regret that we didn't get uh, to your question earlier in the show. So sorry about that. That was probably the guy right in the yellow time. shirt's fault. The canary or the banana or the plantain or whatever. <laughs> Those mean people have called me tonight. Oh, I'll get over it. It's got to be nice, folks. <laughs> How, they're not calling me names for wearing a green T-shirt. But it's, it's all yeah. good. Thanks for taking the fall, man. Hey, I'm here for you. Uh, could have been worse. I'm here for you. I really contemplated putting on a, a Trek uniform. Do it look studious now? <laughs> you can see the chat room now. That's good. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. 2 a.m. in Israel. And he stayed up for an answer, and you didn't give it to him. <laughs> I need more information. <laughs> Pop me an email, okay? So sorry. Live at Category5.tv. We're right out of time, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. This is Category 5 TV. you find us online, www.category5.tv. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. And uh, Eric, nice to see you. Hey, thanks for having thanks me. Thanks for being here. Oh, yeah. 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 Good times. I even shaved. Well, <laughs> you, yeah. the, your I Adam's I apple. Did, yeah, I shaved, shaved the Adam's here, apple. Just, yeah, you know, your, your rosy cheeks. Just up for the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm off to hockey. Are you? Hockey season Hockey has started? started? Yes, it is. Oh, that's a scary time. <laughs> scary time. Unbelievable. 
Oh well, my. everybody have a fantastic week. We will talk to you again next Tuesday night. Uh, Rachel Shu is going to be here in the studio joining us for the first time as co-host. And uh, I'm looking forward to that episode. You want to definitely be here. Uh, we're going to be doing some pretty cool stuff. With I'm Adobe. looking forward to that episode, yeah. too. I may come and watch. Cool stuff going on with Adobe Photoshop. Rachel's going to show us how we can do some fantastic texturing. And then we're going to see if we can do those things on the GIMP. Oh, so, the battle continues. Mm, the battle continues. Open source versus closed source. Expensive. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. Have a great week. See you then.